Um, with me right now is a very special guest. This is a close friend, even father figure to Travis Alexander. Dr. Carl Hyatt is with us from Mesa. Dr. Hyatt, thank you for being with us. It's my understanding that Travis actually told you he feared for his own life. Is that true? Yes, he did. What it, happened, uh, Doctor? Well, Travis would come for Sunday meals, and uh, one day he showed up and, and was telling us that he had broken up with Jody. And the next day he got in his car and noticed that all four tires were slashed. We went to his car and all four tires had been slashed. That story has been told. And then he, he showed up on Sunday and told us about it. And uh, we realized that she was very angry. Um, uh, you know, we, obviously we were, we were a little bit shaken and, and uh, thought, wow, she's, she's vengeful. And, he, and then he said, don't be surprised if I don't show up one of these Sundays, you find me dead somewhere. And uh, we just thought, oh, wow, you know, she really is vengeful, but didn't think past that. And then he said, I'm serious. And we kind of laughed it off again, but, you know, he was predicting and prophesying his own death by Jody. When his tires were slashed, Dr. Hyatt, what were his thoughts on that? Well, I don't really know. I just know that he he knew she was serious and, and that, that she was extremely upset. Um, and, you know, he was with her for about five months just trying to figure out, you know, who she was and, and, and was dating her and seriously was pursuing her, you know. But... Um, as he got to know her more and more, he realized that she wasn't the one for him. And this really, the tire slashing solidified that decision, that it was a good one to break up with her. And he wanted to change his life and, and move on and, and be more positive. And I think she was kind of dragging him down. So he knew he made the right decision, um, especially after the tires were slashed. We're very pleased and proud to have with us a father figure to Travis Alexander. Dr. Carl Hyatt, a very close, close friend to Travis. Dr. Hyatt, how did you and Travis meet? Well, I met Travis through my, my two boys. They actually lived with Travis. Uh, they wanted to be in a bachelor pad and, and leave home. And, and so they, they lived with him, uh, rented out a room. The next Sunday, they came for an evening meal uh, on Sundays, we gather around and have a meal. And they left Travis behind, and they felt so guilty about it. They just said, "Dad, we can't, we can't come back here next Sunday without bringing Travis." They became really good friends. So, he uh, he came for Sunday meal, and it just stuck. Um, his his uh, parents not too long after that, his mom passed away, and so then he came back to Arizona and said, "Okay, you're my family," and wow. uh, we. Felt fortunate to have them consider us that. You know, Dr. Hyatt, um, I always tend to just ask so many questions. It's out of curiosity. It may not have any impact whatsoever on guilt or innocence, but I'm just imagining all of you sitting around the Sunday lunch table and getting closer and closer and closer. And now this. I, I'm still stunned by the fact that Travis actually prophesied, had an inkling. You know, many a true word is spoken in jest when he said, don't be surprised if you find me dead one day. As well as you know Travis, and from what you know about Arius, what is your reaction to what she and her defense lawyers are saying about him in court, that he abused her, she was afraid of him, that he beat her, she killed him in self-defense, and that he's a sexual deviant. Well, you know, it's unfortunate, obviously, to, to hear that. There's none of that is true. Travis, I have four daughters, and they were his younger sisters, and they had no fear whatsoever of being with him at any time 
alone, driving anywhere, going out to eat, being at a show. We took them fishing with us. We had no we had no reservations about Travis. He was not violent. He never raised his temper, uh, raised his voice, I mean. He never showed any kind of temperament that was that was uh, vicious or violent in any way. I've never seen that in Travis. He was so I just positive. wish there was a way, Dr. Hyatt, that the, the prosecution could portray the real Travis in court. You know, this is the deal, doctor. You're a medical doctor. You know, you're so much more schooled than all of us lawyers here on the panel, but it's impossible to get the nature of the victim before the jury. That's inadmissible. That jury will never know that Travis Alexander is like my older brother or somebody's son, just a, a, a good guy that got tangled up with the wrong woman. Let me ask you, what did you think of Arius? And I know that's a hard question for you to, to contemplate now, you know, now that you know, but when you first met her, when you had first been around her, what did you think of her? Well, you know, I try not to pass judgment because, as I said, I really trusted Travis. Uh, in the end, obviously, Travis was right in leaving her. And, and so I, I didn't want to meddle or pry, and I, I reserved my own judgment. I didn't want to say anything, and she was very uh, appropriate, you know, when she came over to eat uh, with her family. You know, we, we told Travis, bring, bring whoever you want. We, you know, if you want to bring over somebody you're dating or whatever, we, she's welcome. And so when Jody came, we felt the same. We didn't want to be anything but welcoming to any, any friend of Travis's.